Alaska. There's no place like it in the world for scenery, solitude, wildlife, and fish. And in Alaska, for freshwater sport fishing, there's no place like Angler's Paradise. Probably the best uh, rainbow trout fishing area in the entire world. It's what people really are looking for when they think about going to Alaska. It's the remote area, um, the lack of roads, uh, the wild fish, the clear streams, just, just, the, just the kind of the epitome of what most people would expect when they're thinking about, you know, wilderness fishing in Alaska. Just the whole atmosphere, the mountains in the background, the smell of the air, the pristine waters that you can just, you know, look down, see the bottom, see the fish actually in the riffle, and then, you know, the, the dry fly just coming down, gently down the riffle, it's just, it's just what fishing is about. It's, it's, it's the essence of the whole experience. It's uh, the smell of the air, it's just amazing, it's so clean. It's incredible. Alaska is incredible. Yesterday we got into some fishing that uh, that's the only word that really fits. Fantastic, incredible. Um, lots of fish, big fish, fighters, um, colorful, pretty. Located 250 air miles southwest of Anchorage in Katmai National Park, the three anglers paradise lodges, Kulik, Grosvenor, and Brooks, are some of the most beautiful settings in Alaska. Each lodge location was carefully picked to place it within some of the best trout and salmon fishing areas in the world. The lodges give anglers paradise guests easy access to hundreds of miles of lakes and streams in the Bristol Bay drainage area and the surrounding region. Some of the largest salmon runs in the world occur here, particularly for the sockeye salmon. That's a beautiful red salmon, Debbie. Hey. <laughs> but there's also great fishing for other salmon species, such as the king, silver, chum, and pink. And because the different species run at different times of the year, the fishing is excellent from June through September. But let's not forget about the rainbow trout that provide anglers with good fishing all season long. All the fly fishing I've done, I've fished trout streams in New York, I fished the Boulder, the Madison in Montana, I fished saltwater fish in the Florida Keys, and this was just bursting with fish. There were just so many fish <laughs> that, uh, I don't know, you, you couldn't miss. You just couldn't miss. Beautiful. Every other cast, bang, another fish. And uh, it wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't fishing, it was just catching. There were no, there were no, uh, <laughs> There wasn't a whole lot of trying going on. It was, it was know, kind of strange. It's incredible, incredible. I've never caught as much volume with the size any place, and I've fished a lot of different places. Fished uh, two other lodges, and they can't compare to this. It's really an incredible place. The culture, the guiding, the food, the ambiance, the bears, everything about it is truly incredible. The fish at Angler's Paradise are all native species. None of the lakes or streams has had to be stocked. That's due in part to the natural bounty of the Bristol Bay and surrounding areas. But it's also the catch and release policy and good resource management that has been handed down through the years, from guide to guide, since the operation was founded in 1950. One thing that impressed me about the guides was the way they really care about the fish. They didn't want the fish banged around, they wanted them left and, uh, and released in, in great health and condition to uh, continue their growth and migrations as fish. They really want to preserve what the fishing experience is here. We're looking really, uh, of course, to land the fish, handle the fish as quickly as possible. Any time we can, we can leave, leave a fish completely in the water, not take him out of the water, uh, if we want pictures, we'll, we'll get the fish prepared, get, a, get the camera prepared, although we try not to say the camera word because that's kind of unlucky. Fish tends to flop away. But uh, you know, we, you know, we try, to get, try, to, uh, try to get those things set up ahead of time, get ready for those things, um, land and handle our fish just as gently as we possibly can. Uh, again, our, our livelihood depends on that. So. Uh, it's, it's terribly important that we do that, and we do our best to do that.
we want to preserve it. We want to preserve it not only for ourselves and for our clients, but for the future. I would hope that my children and my guide's children would be able to enjoy the same type of um, great experience that, we're, that we have today. The fishing is really just as good as I remember it being when I was a kid. And I think it's because of the fact that the attitude that our guides have had in preserving the resource. In fact, it was Sonny's father, Ray Peterson, who is responsible for Angler's Paradise today. In 1934, as a young footloose aviator, he came to Alaska to make a living in the territory as a pilot. During an aviation career that began with biplanes and continued through the jet age, Ray did it all, from barnstorming to airline CEO. In the process, he recognized an opportunity to promote Southwest Alaska's remarkable fishing and spectacular sightseeing. The fruit of Ray's efforts became the Angler's Paradise Lodges in Katmai National Park the first sports fishing lodges in Alaska. And being first meant Ray had his pick of the best spots in Alaska on which to build his enterprise. All of the lodges are situated on rivers between lakes. This ensures that the fishing won't be disturbed by high muddy water because the water moves from one clear lake to another. The fishing is great right from the lodge. The premier angler's paradise lodge is Kulik a deluxe fly-out fishing lodge with the world-famous Kulik River full of giant rainbow trout right outside the lodge door. Each Kulik cabin is fully plumbed and guests can enjoy a hot tub and sauna after a long day of fishing. And for those seeking just a little more adventure, there are four float planes based at Kulik that can fly you to some of the region's other spectacular fishing holes for char, Dolly Varden, Arctic grayling, salmon, rainbow trout, and pike. <laughs> On some of the flyouts, you'll proceed in a boat to a guide camp where you can fish off the bank. Or you could take a one day raft trip and float down the stream and fish, then be picked up at the lower part of the river and flown back to the lodge by nightfall. Brooks Lodge was originally a fishing only destination. Today, it's not only a fishing destination, but also a place to do some bear watching or to begin your own hiking adventure. At the Brooks River, within walking distance of the Brooks Lodge, you'll discover one of the most famous rainbow trout streams in Alaska, a place where the rainbows run all summer, and not just any rainbow. These are the really big ones, but there's also a great variety of fish in the brooks. You'll also find good grayling, char, and salmon fishing. Uh, while we have guides there and everything, we get a lot of do-it-yourselfers there. So, and it's a little bit less expensive to stay there, and it's a bigger facility. And we also get people at Brooks who are non-fishermen. We get people there that are there just to look at the bears, and we get a lot of people there that are up to see the volcanic area, the Valley of 10,000 Smokes. In the good old days, clients would catch salmon and trout right at the foot of the falls. Today, the area around the falls is dedicated strictly to bear watching and has become so popular that, during some parts of the season, the watchers outnumber the anglers. The Park Service has built special elevated walkways and viewing stations for the comfort, convenience and safety of the bears and bear watchers. And the reason why it's world famous for bear viewing, of course, is because the sockeye salmon come up through there. Nestled on the Narrows between the Coville and Grosvenor Lakes is one of the best kept secrets in the fishing world, Grosvenor Lodge, accommodating just six guests at a time. The intimate, rustic setting of Grosvenor is ideal for families, business associates, or a group of fishing buddies. The Grosvenor Lodge is located halfway between the Brooks and Kulik Lodges, situated on a spit of land between the Coville and Grosvenor Lakes. The area is great for rainbow trout, char, lake trout, pike, and in July, sockeye salmon. Guests can fly out of Grosvenor Lodge to fish for king, chum, pink, and silver salmon. There's three guest cabins there. Now these cabins don't have uh, plumbing in them. They're a little bit more rustic. 
but right adjacent to the cabins there's a, a nice bathhouse with two bathrooms in it and uh, nearby kitchen facilities. And it also gives you a little bit more remote feel because of its small size. So it gives you that old time remote Alaskan feel and it's just a great place if you want to have the whole place to yourself. Yesterday we went to a place and they talked about the boil and I I never heard of a lake trout boil um, and I said what's a boil and they said well that's when the fish are working the 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 small fry to the extent that the water looks like it's boiling right <laughs> I've been around fishermen all my life right <laughs> so, so we flew in and we set up and we noticed that the gulls were and the, and the water ducks were going crazy and we saw the we saw the water agitated and so we got out in it and we got into lake trout that were incredible and no this is no fish tail when salmon fry pass through the grosvenor narrows in june the trout chase them to the surface to feed the sheer numbers of fish jumping and splashing in the feeding frenzy actually causes the water to look as if it were boiling. You got him? Is all this talk about fish getting you hungry? Don't worry. The cooks at Angler's Paradise Lodges know how to conquer your ravenous appetite. That looks good. They know that a hard day of fishing makes people hungry, so they take great care to prepare delicious, hearty meals to keep everyone satisfied. Kitchen obviously is a professional, professional somebody in that kitchen. The food was fantastic, the food was plentiful, the food was hot, it was well served. Uh, the dining accommodations were nice. I particularly enjoyed uh, eating with uh, the employees of the lodge. Uh, the employees are all obviously uh, successful, educated people. They carry on an intelligent conversation on lots of subjects. Uh, they do it, you know, they, they do it very naturally. It, it's normal. They're, they're accustomed to eating with, the, you know, eating with their, with their clients. And uh, so the kitchen dining experience was very nice. Accommodations are incredible, comfortable. Well, I'd, I'd seen pictures of Kulik, you know, obviously before coming, seeing the website, you know, seeing what the buildings look like. But uh, actually being here and walking through the lodge and through the grounds, it's just a... It's just a phenomenal place. The way everything's laid out with the picturesque views of the lake and the lodge, it's just, uh, just great. The food was fantastic. The lunch spread was unbelievable. I mean, we, uh, we ate like kings yesterday. It was, uh, it was fantastic. And the rustic elegance provides just the right atmosphere for forming new friendships and reaffirming old ones. It was awesome. It was, Fishing was awesome. It was excellent. I, uh, Caught a 23-inch uh, rainbow and a beautiful color. I mean, it's the only way to describe it. And, and the uh, Lakers were just extremely cooperative. I mean, we, we, it was almost every other cast that we, we pulled in the Lakers. So it, it was excellent. You, you look down into the water and the bottom of the, uh, of the lake would be moving with so many fish you couldn't believe it. For the last 10 or 12 years, we've been to upper Ontario and we usually walleye in northern fish, and uh, there our northerns get up to 20 to 25 pounds. So we're used to big fish. We're just not used to this quantity. It's, you know, it's amazing. I mean, I've never fished that kind of fish before, sockeye salmon. I had one that actually hooked into. It took three leaps and then hit the river again, and it took three more leaps, and, and you're, you're on there, and you're really trying to fight that uh, sockeye, and ultimately I did land it, but it takes roughly 10 to 15 minutes if you were, and you have to tire them out or otherwise you lose them and I did lose a number of that, them. That is the most amazing thing is that every sockeye you get on the hook it takes 15 to 20 minutes to bring it in which is incredible to me. This rainbow I had today took a little time too. <laughs> in my own case uh, I haven't fly fished for about 20 years and Kulik was a, a real nice experience because even the first day they get you back into the basics of fly casting and as far as the fishing goes, there's no better fishing in the world. So I recommend it highly. Yeah, at Kulik Lodge, I mean, uh, the guides are very helpful. They're instructive. 
as well as uh, the variety of fish you have here. You have your grayling and rainbow and your lakers. And, uh, it, it just, in the sockeye and various salmon runs. I mean, uh, this week uh, you could also choose to go for kings, and, and the kings are 35 pounds plus. The variety of fishing is, is just phenomenal. We're hoping to get some bear tomorrow, too. Yeah. I mean, not on our fly rods. <laughs> <laughs> on, on camera. Each of the Angler's Paradise Lodges offers a unique experience. Whether you enjoy the intimate wilderness setting of Grosvenor, take advantage of the flyout opportunities at Kulik, or create your own adventures starting from Brooks, there's something here for everyone. Certainly we have ranges of anglers from, from somebody who's never picked up a fly rod or, or a, any sort of fishing rod at all uh, from fishing professionals, from, from people who've done it all over the world uh, in different places. Uh, we'll have a lot of folks who will hop right off an airplane, we'll, we'll get them a fly rod, we'll get them right out on the lawn, uh, put a fly rod in their hands for the first time. Uh, they may hold on to the wrong end of it. You know, we can work from there. <laughs> you know, we turn the rod around and then, and uh, game on. And that's not a problem, actually. I, one of the things I enjoy most, uh, and, and I think all the guides do, is taking someone who's never done it before and spending a few hours getting them casting, getting them comfortable with what they're doing, getting them on one of our rivers, and and, uh, and seeing some success. And that, that's. That's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for us as guides. Uh, it really, really is. But no matter which lodge or combination of lodges you choose to visit, the fishing can't be beat. There are salmon runs all season long. The Mighty King Salmon Run begins in June, and the Sockeye Salmon Run from the end of June to July. The Chum and Pink Salmon Runs begin toward the end of July, and from August to mid-September, we'll be fishing for the Silver Salmon. The rainbow trout fishing is great throughout the season, with peak times for the different species. So no matter what time you visit Angler's Paradise, you're always going to find great fishing. Whether from right outside your cabin door, or on a boat, or on a fly-out adventure. Angler's Paradise is in the memory business. Here visitors are transported to a place that exceeds expectation. A place where the rivers and lakes are choked full of fish and where bears share the waters with humans below snow-capped peaks. Every guest takes home a gift, the memory of an Alaskan adventure in Angler's Paradise. The way to fish Alaska is Kulik. If you want the absolute Alaskan experience, this is the only way to go. They, uh, they take care of you, it's absolutely gorgeous, and the fishing just doesn't get any better. It's impossible.